right. Time to assess roof damage if there is any. I have no car damage, so kind of don't think there's roof damage. Dish is fine. I'm gonna use it. Um. Hmm. Everything looks good. Yeah, looks fine to me. The garden. All right, so I guess we can go ahead and do an outside update since we're doing like a tornado update. And basically there was no tornado. Uh, just hail, but kind of check out all the garden did. Um, those guys might have took like a few hits from hail, like right there. But that's not that's not anything that they'll grow through that so quick. Tomatoes look fine, strawberries look fine. Um, and here's like the biggest part of the garden at the moment. And basically, it's just all potatoes and onions, and then there's kind of like a beet from last summer right there. But uh, yeah, anyways, four different kinds of potatoes. I've got like, I don't know, some goldens, some other type, and I've got reds, and then I've even got purples right there. So those will basically be like uh, a purple tomato on the inside and outside. I'm really excited to have those. I have not started my sweet potatoes yet, but I will eventually. Um, everything here looks fine. You know, I may have lost one leaf like right there, so like, okay. Here's a hit, and I only got golf ball size. My parents apparently got um, we got baseball, and they're just like across town. But um, like one hit there, you know, no biggie. Looks like I've got some other stuff growing back. I'm not really sure. Just kind of let it do its thing until it gets big. Um, here is a tomato, and if you're wondering, like, if you're gonna plant one tomato, like only one type of tomato in your house, um, this is what I recommend, or at your house, this is what I'd recommend you do. Um, these are the yellow cherry tomatoes and you can see you see that one vine that's depicted there and how many tomatoes on it That is accurate. That is very very accurate. These are the like just highest producing tomato I know a lot of people that have like these and they just get them on accident because they drop so many tomatoes that next season They just come back and they just grow ridiculously fast ridiculously well. They do vine uh, They just produce so much that they you know end up don't really even eating them but that's really what I'm looking for, easy and a lot. So I gave it its own big little container. And this is a uh, self-watering, self-wicking. So basically, I put weed mat. And when the, the roots grow out to the edge, because it's a dry surface, they will die. And when they die out here, what it does is it tells that root to grow more roots towards the uh, inner root system. Um, and then it's also got a reservoir here to basically keep it watered. It will wick water up into it and basically I just add water right here and then if I want to fertilize I can just add it up here it also saves me a lot of my fertilizer so if I use any um, you know uh, water soluble fertilizers they'll basically drain down and be wicked back up so I waste a whole lot less but I do expect it to go up this trellis here and I'm probably gonna throw a lot more up because it's it'll take over that you know here in like two months that'll probably be taken over um, so I'll have to add more but um, I need to get over here and start doing stuff it's just kind of you know a process but um, I'm about to start cutting these guys in half um, I've got four so one goldfisher and one and then I've got two more over there I'm gonna cut like the two worst condition ones in half and then I'll be doing like fish and crayfish and aquatic plant grow out outside this summer I'm not really sure where you can kind of go there, or I could kind of go there, I'm not sure. But, um, yeah. Um, over here, and these are like recently planted. That's just a squirrel digging. But, um, uh, just a bunch of different bell peppers. So, this area of the yard gets more shade than that area. So, that's why I put the bell peppers over here and tomatoes are basically going to go over there because they can take that heat in the summer. We get 100 degree days and 
literally, I mean, everything's wilting. Sometimes even tomatoes will. Will you be quiet? Can you be quiet? I'm not talking to you. Not talking to you. Um, but yeah, so basically just bell peppers. I've got red, yellow, orange, and then everything else, like every other bit of this has either garlic or white onions in it. Um, and over there, those are all red onions. And over here, just more peppers, different kinds though. Uh, sweet banana, gypsy sweet, sweet pepper, cubanella, and then a poblano, so. Hey, I'm not talking to you. Um, but yeah, kind of putting these over here into those instead of in here because those are a little bit more experimental. I had a banana pepper that just did terrible last year. I'm not really sure why. Um, what are you doing, you goofy bird? Um, what? What is it? What is the problem? Do you have water? You have water. I don't know. What's your problem? What? What? Just quit. Quit. Um, those are good. What? What? Huh? What? What? What are you doing, Miss Dottie? Come here. Come here, Dottie. Come here. Come here. Come here, Chunkies. Oh, no, okay. What? <laughs> Ooh, over here we have some strawberries. That's a weird one. But, um, these are, yeah, just some strawberries kind of coming in. Fairly decent amount. Nothing special, but this is also a self-watering uh, little table that I made, I guess. Um, so, yeah, basically I can just fill it up here and then it over drains right there and... You get the idea. Goldfish are doing good. We're getting fed again. Looks like I might have put too much in there. But, um, yeah. They're hanging out. And then, how did I lose that? What happened? Huh? What is this? Why is that? What happened? No, that's working, and oh, I see why. I kicked that out. Whoops. All right, guys, so it looks like I lost some footage, of course. So we're going to reshoot this real quick. And basically what I did was I moved my goldfish, my two arandas that I had, outside. Um, basically, it's just too hot in the fish room right now. So basically, you know, for the next few months, we're going to have some really nice, amazing, cool, beautiful 70 degree weather that is just going to be perfect for these guys. Um, so they're in about a 40 gallon tote right now. Kind of waiting for that to get cycled. I'll probably let them hang out in there. Now this happens to be, that's well into the 60s, mid 60s. This is probably low 70s. Now the difference is that's white and more in the shade. That's black and uh, a bit more out in the sun. So it absorbs heat and it's, you know, closer to the sun. So um, that's actually a really good experiment seeing that the black one is probably, I mean, 5 to 10 degrees. One second, let me see. So, so I was guessing 10 degree difference. Let's see. We are at 67 degrees. That feels colder than that. We are at 77 degrees. Was I right or what? 77, 67. So 5, 10 degree difference is what I said. Right on. But 67 is pretty good for him. Um, but that's a cool little experiment. Just, you know, the fact that it's in the shade and it's white versus black. But um, this is where they're going to spring. Um, when summer rolls around and we start hitting 80 plus degree temperatures out here. I'll probably move them and you know back inside but where's my you know gray aranda there's the orange aranda and okay there's the gray aranda they're they're kind of skittish out here to be honest um, I, I think it's because they don't they can't see me anymore so they don't know what's kind of coming from up top um, so it's a bit different for them so they're gonna have to kind of you know adapt but um, Basically, I've got this hornwort out here for them. It's a little bit of cover, and I kind of want to, you know, give it a chance to grow outside, see if I can really boost its growth. And uh, I want to try using this as a natural spawning material. Um, basically, it's really nice once you get that nice green growth on it. I really like that stuff. Um, so I want to see if I can't grow a bunch of this for the fish room 
um, you know, during the summertime. Um, but basically, yeah, just got like a terracotta pot and then a little plastic one weighted with some rocks. Kind of give them some more cover. And then this thing actually, you know, we've got like a good four inch ledge there and a two inch ledge. So it's not like anything can really prey on them that much without just dropping off in. And then uh, I put in a cycled sponge filter and uh, about 50% or I'm going to say more like 30% water from that tote. Because that's actually, the TDS and that's pretty low because it's got so much rain going into it um, all the time. But um, yeah, so um, I think they're doing good out here and I think they're going to enjoy it, you know, once they kind of adapt a little bit. But uh, yeah, that's kind of the uh, the goldfish pond update. And soon enough we'll get this guy situated i kind of wish i could paint it white to kind of cool it down um to be honest i may actually like dig a bit of a hole and then not bury it completely bury like the bottom half and then just come around the sides with like something like that sand there or dirt that way i don't have a giant hole and i don't have to do as much work but i can still get the cooling effects of uh of the earth so uh yeah that's that all right guys so basically everything's fine um we didn't get hit with the tornado as you guys could see sorry about losing that footage i literally like i put the you know the camera the phone in my pocket and i literally was making the video assuming i had you know the footage of me going out to check on the chickens hail kind of falling and it was lightly falling and kind of showing you the hail and all that otherwise i'm not sure if i even would have made it so it kind of sucks but you didn't miss a whole lot. You did kind of miss me running out through the hail and all that, uh, which I didn't even get hit. Um, surprisingly enough, like I kind of wanted to get hit a little bit. That's why I had the thick coat on. I wanted to see if it was like as bad as you know getting hit by a paintball or something like that. But um, yeah, so nothing to really worry about. Um, I do appreciate all of your guys' concern and uh, basically all the support from everyone, that's, it's really nice, it's heartwarming to see that people like, and I'm not even, wasn't even really a problem, but everyone kind of still was um, nice and kind. But um, before the tornado, one of the things I do want to share with you before I end this is, um, I went to Walmart and basically I was like, man, if I lose power right now, it's just, it's gonna be bad. I have tanks that I'm trying to cycle and that are on the teeter-totter of being cycled and I don't want them to go out of cycle. I have wild fish, killifish, fish, all kinds of fish that I'm really just like they're on the edge and I want to keep them stable for a period of time and I don't want to lose power and have nitrite or ammonia spikes uh, for a week because of a tornado. So what I did was that I went out to Walmart and got some air pumps and I want to show you guys the, you, you guys these. You got to eat. But here are my battery powered air pumps. And um, I went out and I got a few more. These guys right here. And uh, basically I want to show you these guys. So a lot of, you know, basically battery powered air pumps are like about $20 from Amazon and LFS's. And they're generally these kind and they take these big, big batteries. Now these are great and all, but you know, $20 for an air pump, and then what, like five or $10 for batteries? It's kind of brutal. It, I mean, it's really brutal. Um, and, and I'm not about that. So what I wanna do is, I, I wanna show you these guys. These run off of two AA batteries. So a lot cheaper there. You can even get rechargeable AA batteries for not that much. So they won't have to cost you a lot if you do use them a lot. Now, what these are made for is bait buckets, and Academy sells them. A lot of sporting equipment stores and fishing stores sell them in the fishing section where your bait buckets and stuff are. Walmart sells them too. These cost $4.96. This costs like $7.80 something cents. So under $8, under $5. Now, I want to give you a comparison of how well these work. This is my, uh, one of my Panda Guppy tanks. So this one's a little, we all, we're more familiar with this one. It's not a DIY sponge that I made. Um, basically, I'm gonna go with the small one first. And um, so we're off, hooking up the small one, and we're turning it on. Doesn't look too much different than when it was hooked up to the, um, 
the actual pump. I can tell it's less. So that's your small one. And basically I'm gonna do some, some editing here for us so we can really compare. Small one, normal one. So it's obviously a bit more on the normal one, but that will absolutely run that. Now this is a 20, this is a 20 gallon tank. So let's go to our bigger one. All right, so time for the bigger one. It's working about the same as this one, to be honest. So there, there's a big one. Now we're gonna go back to the little one. So little one, big one. Back to the little one. So I will say, it does look like this one puts out a bit more pressure, but this one will work just the same. I mean, it's, they'll both do the job. This one probably does have more pressure. This will probably go a little bit deeper than this one. Um, now let's hook this up to a, um, a deeper tank. So this is my 55 gallon guppy tank with just a regular um, little air pump. That's like a 2060 air pump. Um, and uh, yeah, we have the same type of sponge filter as in the 20 gallon. We're gonna see how these guys do. So for the small one first. That's the small one. So the big one is right here. Not using it. Here's our small one right there. We're good. See, it's not that, I promise it's not that one. There's only two airlines going in there. One of which is unplugged, right there. So, I mean, I'll scoot back so you can kind of, well, come on now. Be a bit better as I, like, mess with stuff. So now let's go hook up the big one. All right, so the big one's going. I really can't notice a big difference between the $5 one and the $8 one. Now these are supposed to last, I mean, hours, out 20 plus hours, one sec. So let's see, air rates for, air rates eight gallons or two, or eight gallons, one or two V-sales, air rates eight gallons. I don't know what that's about because the, let's not go what they, they off of what they say, but uh, plus 44 hours, package keeps pump dry. I don't, I don't know what that's for. Um, so off of two D cells, you go for 44 hours. And now off of this one, runs 20 hours off of one or two AA batteries. Um, so basically, I mean, if you've got AA batteries, you, you're getting yourself in your fish tank through uh, that power outage with no problems, at least on the air side for a lot cheaper than you would have before, considering we now have a double A battery powered pump for $5. I mean, you buy five of these or four of these and you just bought, you know, you just bought the price of one of those big ones that you would have got from Amazon. And not to mention how much money you're gonna save using double A's instead of uh, D cells, which are just ridiculous. That and double A's coming and recharged, but I don't know how many times I can say it. So I'm gonna hook up the uh, AA battery one again, just to kind of compare. That, it's not, so I can tell you that is not as much as this guy. And I'm gonna do some editing here and we'll kind of compare one after the other. So right now we're gonna start with the AA. All right, that is the 2D cell one. And now we're gonna go back to the actual air pump. I mean, you can obviously see the bigger the better on the flow, but we're gonna go back to the uh, double A after that. You can't say that won't operate a sponge filter because it will, and it'll do it all day long. Um, so anyways, we're gonna go D. That is the D battery. That is the double A battery. And that 
that is the um, actual 120 volt air pump right there guys all right guys so we're gonna end it there I really hope that that helps and it saves you a lot of money for five dollars in double-a batteries you really can't I mean you cannot beat that and I mean Walmart so anyone in America or with a Walmart go to the fishing section look for the bait buckets I mean they might not always be in stock but 492 look for that at the worst comes to worst I'm sure if your Walmart doesn't carry it for some reason I've seen them at every single one um, it's like their brand kind of product it's not even their brand because Academy has them too um, and they're five dollars everywhere so um, if you can't find it at your Walmart I'm sure you can order it and have it delivered for free to your Walmart so $5 I really hope that helps you guys and I really think it will anyways guys that is it for the post tornado update I hope you guys find this helpful and um, have a good day thank you for watching consider subscribing like comment all that fun stuff and um, yeah okay.